Yeah, so I think, I think there's a few issues. Um, and one of them is obviously uh, you need to be able to do this with a pretty high level of activity. So you need to identify a lot of cells are able to effectively edit their genes in a substantial proportion and then put them back in and hope that they ultimately take over. Uh, even though we know that these people have not been blasted with chemotherapy to wipe out their own cell population. So I think some of the obstacles is creating a situation where this can be done effectively and efficiently so that you have a large proportion of cells that have been altered that can then be reinfused. Or if you can come up with a way to actually do it in the person or to put them into stem cells that can be then transfused into the person and hopefully then continue to expand so that their own cells are increasingly missing the CCR5. So I think that those are gonna be the obstacles. There's been some clinical data with some of these strategies that have suggested little hints of promise, but nowhere close to a cure based on what's been tested so far. I think the other obstacle, in addition to creating a system that's extremely efficient and proving that it actually makes a difference, the other obstacle that everybody is struggling with a little bit is safety. You know, altering somebody's genes could potentially pose some risks, especially if there's some off-target alterations that occur and that you don't just hit the CCR5 gene, but you perhaps hit other genes that might put people at risk for complications down the road. Uh, so that this is gonna be looked at very carefully, will need to be regulated, uh, and studies will have to start small and get big if they demonstrate evidence of efficacy with long-term long -term, long follow-up for safety. Not our traditional studies where you do it for a year and see if everything's okay, because the consequences of editing someone's genes may not become apparent for many years. Yeah, I, I would say that's exactly the case is that this is very, very early in the pursuit of this type of treatment strategy in patients, uh, with the goal mostly being trying to cure people or at least put them in remission for HIV so that they don't need to remain on antiretroviral therapy. And the bar is really high. You know, I think this is an extremely important avenue of research to try to cure people. But again, we have to balance whatever the risks and costs are against what our current strategies for managing HIV, and that's often one pill a day with no side effects and a chance for you know, a long, healthy, normal life.